Hi everybody, welcome to the Red Dice Diaries. I'm your host John, and recently I've been thinking about skills in OSR games. Now before my fellow OSRers, if that's even a word, start lighting torches and burning me in effigy, hear me out. And we're going to talk a bit more about it after this. So this all came about when I was listening to a recent YouTube video from the channel Ranger Lemure titled White Box, Everything You Need to Start Playing OD&D Today. And there'll be a link in the description of this show to that video. In it, they were talking about White Box Fantasy Medieval Adventure Game, or White Box FMAG as it's also referred to. I should probably mention at this point that whilst OSE has my heart and is my retro clone of choice, I also have a strong regard for FMAG and have two copies of the rulebook, one with a red dragon cover and the other with some great black and white artwork on it. If you're not aware of White Box FMAG, it's basically a tweaked version of an already existing clone called Swords and Wizardry White Box. The author, Charlie Mason, loved Swords and Wizardry White Box but noticed a few things they weren't keen on eventually getting so frustrated with waiting for an update that they made their own. Now, you can get this from Amazon or Drive Through RPG, and there'll be links down below. If you're interested, I also highly recommend Ranger Lemieux's video. It gives a brief rundown of the selling points of this game. So, what does all this gushing about FMAG have to do with skills in OSR games? Well, one of the things that FMAG does very well, in my opinion, is that it streamlines some of the older D&D rules. For example, switching to one saving throw, and also when it comes to thieves, not my favourite class mind you, it distills all of their special class abilities down to one stat called, appropriately enough, thievery. This stat is roll under and based on the roll of 1d6. Thieves succeed on a 1 or 2 at first level, rising to a 1 to 5 chance of success by level 10, and this is as high level as FMAG goes in its core book. You don't have to look up separate special skills if you're climbing a wall or picking a pocket. If you're a thief and you're doing something thiefly, just roll that 1d6, and if you get below the number, you're good. Now, I love this. It's nice and simple, and the skill is vague enough that there's wiggle room and space for sensible judgment calls. For example, you're not going to have the GM saying, oh no, you can't jimmy that window open because you don't have a burglary skill or anything like that. Boom, it's all covered by the thievery skill. And obviously that was an extreme example for effect, and I doubt any old school gems would cleave that extremely close to the rules. But it's just nice to have a system that trusts you as gamers to make the sensible call. It also got me thinking about one of the other D&D based systems that I like, called Castles and Crusades, which to me has always felt like it leaned a bit more towards 3rd edition with its siege system, and obviously that's just my opinion. In CNC, you don't have skills but use attributes for most checks, rolling 1d20 and adding a modifier trying to beat a difficulty number. However, if the activity you're attempting to accomplish is within the wheelhouse of your class, then you also get to add your level to this roll. This is great in my opinion because at level 1, everyone is sort of on a level playing field, but as you start going up in level, the classes really start to distinguish themselves in their particular area of expertise. For example, at first level, a level 1 thief and a level 1 fighter, who both have a plus 1 dexterity modifier, are going to be rolling pretty much the same to pick a pocket. 1d20 plus 1, trying to beat that difficulty score. However, once they've gone up a few levels, that level 3 fighter is still only rolling with a plus 1 modifier to pick a pocket, whereas the level 3 thief is now rolling with a plus 4, their level plus their dexterity modifier, meaning that the classes start to pull away in their area of expertise as the levels go up and become more accomplished. And I think that's entirely appropriate, because let's face it, if you've somehow managed to survive up to level 3 or beyond as a thief, presumably you've got better at doing thiefly stuff. Now, although 3rd edition and subsequent editions haven't really buttered my biscuits, so to speak, one of the things I did like about 3rd edition was that for skill and attribute rolls, you were trying to roll high and beat a difficulty number. That's nothing against roll under mechanics, I just find it a bit more intuitive and fun to have higher rolls be better. It's also why I personally prefer Ascending AC. I mean, rolling a natural 20, to me, just feels so much more epic and exciting than trying to roll a 1 to succeed at something. But like I say, that's just my personal opinion. 
So while these thoughts have been rattling around in my head for a while, along with bits and pieces of conversation I've had with Jason at the Nerds RPG Variety Cast, again linked below, about Barbarians of Lemuria, which has a simple skill system based on occupations. I've also been watching some old Dungeon Craft videos, again linked to the channel below, where Professor Dungeon Master has been outlining the version of D&D he uses, which is basically picking the bits and pieces he likes from older edition, 5th edition, the various editions between, and other spin-off games like Easy D6, Index Card RPG, Black Hack, etc, etc, and then mixing them together to get a game that suits the tastes of both him and his gaming group. I really enjoyed listening to that. To me, it epitomised that old-school spirit of tinkering with roles, taking published stuff, and then really making it your own. And this was a strong part of the appeal of the OSR movement, in inverted commas, when I first started stumbling across those games. Now, following the fairly recent conclusion of our Smoke and Snow OSE game, some of the constructive feedback I was getting from the players was that the classes felt a little bit samey and a little bit flat. Part of the reason that we jumped to the finite vampire campaign we're running now is that the players wanted a break from faux medieval fantasy and to do something else rather than jumping straight into another fantasy game. And whilst I love my fantasy gaming and my old school D&D, I can sort of see their point. After all, as the GM, I get to play all sorts of NPCs and monsters with weird and varied abilities, whereas they get the few abilities that their class allows them. And in old school games, aside from getting some spells and maybe being able to, to do a bit of tracking or hunt a little bit easier, those abilities are pretty few and far between. So I started thinking about whether skills could provide a bit more variety without necessitating a big change to the rules. Because to be honest, I'm not looking to make the rules massively more complicated. One of the big draws and appeals about old school games to me is that the rules have a sort of elegant simplicity to them. And I've heard one of my players say they're barely rule systems at all. They're more sort of guidelines to do a bit of a paraphrasing of Jack Sparrow there and they more just sort of guide you in a direction and rely on your the GM player judgment to make those calls and I quite like that you know the the GMs as long as you've got an open-minded GM sort of working with the players then that can lead to some really fun games now let me preface this by saying that I'm in no way going to do a big list of skills like third edition because whilst I admire some of the things that third edition did the whole sort of having a million skill points that you don't have to work out how to distribute and making everything a skill check where you have to cross-reference different skills and get synergy bonuses and stuff like that. That is the stuff of my worst nightmares. And it was one of the reasons why I never really fell in love with the game. Now, what I was thinking is that if I adapt the Castles and Crusades style of skills, i.e. using attribute modifier roles, maybe tweaking the attribute mods a bit since they're pretty minimal in most OSR games, with the level added on for skills covered by the class, this might add a bit of extra variety or oomph to the player characters in the game. I was also spurred on by Professor DM talking about how he uses the career list from Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, another game I'm also a big fan of and have a couple of copies of, and I thought I could perhaps also allow PCs to randomly roll a career to represent what they did becoming a, before becoming an adventurer, and that they would also get to add an additional bonus to. I'm not sure whether I'd allow them to add their level, since they're not really practicing this craft anymore, but perhaps a plus two modifier or something to reflect the skills I had before. And obviously you could add the level if it was also in your class wheelhouse. For example, a character who trained as a smith and who is now a fighter could make a case for adding their level and the job modifier when trying to repair or maintain a weapon. Plus, it would negate the need for specific thief skills, except for maybe backstab, since that would all be covered by the class attribute slash skill level bonus. One additional also positive thing of this is it sort of sneaks a little bit of a background into old school characters without necessitating pages and pages of a backstory, which if you've listened to me talk previously, you'll know I'm not a massive fan of each to their own, but I generally just like a couple of bullet points to cover backstory, and that's grand. I prefer to focus on what the heroes are doing now in the game rather than what they sort of did in the made-up space before the game. 
However, ha having this occupation that gives you just a little bonus also adds a nice little touch of background without necessitating a lot of extra writing or reading for the GM. If you've just got on your character sheet, occupational skill, blacksmith, baker, city watchman or something like that it tells you at least a little bit about what the player characters were up to and you can sort of riff on that in the game without entailing a lot of extra work on either the gm or the player's behalf so those are my ideas for potentially sort of how i want to bring some skills into my game and obviously i'm going to think about this a little bit more and how exactly i want to implement it these are just my sort of initial ideas and i may make some further episodes talking about this in the future depending on when and if i get to work on it so what are your thoughts people out there listening well i hope you're listening what do you think about skills in old school games are they abomination that should be purged and never allowed to darken the doors of an osr clone do you love skills in games have you implemented them in your osr games what do you think about taking bits and pieces from different osr clones and incorporating them into your version of D, D. i'd love to hear what you have to say on the subject if you want to get in touch there are a number of different ways you can do so you can leave us a voicemail message using speakpipe or anchor and there'll be links to that in the description below or you can send us an email to rddrpgpodcast at gmail.com and you might be featured in a future voicemail episode so until we see you again Take care, stay safe, and whatever game you're playing out there, have fun.